All right, all right. This is um, video number four. Um, we are still in the, um, um, in the light of eternity um, with um, Francis Chang. Um, the video um, um, is it's, it's just amazing um, what God is capable of doing through his people. Um, and this video clearly um, displays the, you know, the power of unity in the body of Christ um, and how God is able to maneuver and bring together uh, people from all walks of life in order to be able to uh, fulfill a vision um, or the vision that he gave Mr. Francis Chang. Um, I don't believe that this is limited to uh, just him. But I believe that when something is of God, no one can stop it. Let's go ahead and um, get a get a little bit more of this in. Um, and forgive me, guys, if I seem to <laughs> talk so much. I just get so excited. Please ask around the project. You had these volunteers. You know, they're building this app for free. So how did that happen? And I, I remember uh, sitting across from them, and I said, uh, "You get to connect." your gift directly to amazing kingdom ministry work. You know, that, that great design will help rescue girls out of, out of slavery. And so I really didn't need to sell anything. Well, that's what, that's what I think, too, is that, I mean, there was an explanation, but there wasn't like any type of begging or please, please, please. It was just, I think, because there's certain people that are looking for that. Yeah. Uh, it's just like saying, hey, I'm going to Pebble Beach to play golf, and I, we have three people, and I need a fourth for my foursome. You don't have to describe it too much. Yeah. Someone that wants to go golf is yeah. like, hey, hey, I'm in, I'm in. I'm, you know, and I feel like that was the attitude of the team totally. was like, this is something I want to do. Yeah. This is like, this is, <laughs> this is what I dream about. If the Spirit of God is in you, when you hear stuff like this, yeah. Something just awakens. Amen. And says, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to be a part of that. Yeah. Tell, like, you don't have to beg. And in fact, they're kind of yeah. begging you to be like, okay, I want to, I want to get involved. How do I get involved? Tell me what yeah. to do. I'll do anything, you know? Yeah. And so that's really been the experience with the team. And you said it made me think of like uh, Elizabeth and Mary, <laughs> you know, like the baby leaping yeah, yeah, in yeah, the yeah. womb. Right. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, boom, there's this immediate like backflip yeah. from the baby inside yeah. of you. And so that's why that ought to be the experience for yeah. for anything that we do with oh, yeah. the kingdom and the church. Amen. You know, the other thing that, you know, we said early on, you know, you guys have all, you know, were volunteering in and I said, man, if you go and you work on this project, uh, it's gonna be one of the coolest things that you'll have done over the summer or eight months. And then, you know, when we actually, uh, get something real going there. I want you guys to see it with your own eyes. And so, you know, for us to be thinking through a time where we can go serve with Crisis Aid and, you know, be a part of their uh, uh, feeding program and actually go visit the, uh, the red light district where they're rescuing these girls out. And I think that's, that's the one thing I think the mission trips have really helped me with is to actually touch them and see them. It's not just this group of people. They have names and I know their names now. And so if I don't do anything, it's going to drive me nuts. You're all Amen. very talented, you know, and the last thing I want you guys to do is um, be sucked up into this thing where there's like this line, it's in your book that gets quoted all the time. Our greatest fear should not be failure, but at succeeding at things that do not matter. Which, by the way, is not my quote. I was quoting someone else in the book. Well, it's and, yours I, and, it, now. and it says it in the book, but then everyone just puts it up as my quote, which I'll take it, but just, I was quote, honest. In the, it's a great quote. I wish I had come up with it. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I 
mean, I, I just want to experience God. I want to experience God everywhere I go. And that doesn't happen by just getting to the right place. It's by really asking Him in faith and saying, God, I want to experience you like never before. Amen. These people are starving to death because they don't have enough food to eat. They don't have enough food to eat because they don't have jobs and there's no industry there. There's no, there's just no chance for these people really. And what happened over the, over generations is that they had land that was enough to sustain them. But the average family size is six to eight children. And so when the father passes away, he divides his land up evenly. Well, you do that two or three generations and all of a sudden a nice piece of land becomes a very small piece of land. The people just don't have enough to sustain their families on, to sustain themselves on. They've got these trees, these coffee trees, and these agents will come down, these coffee buyers will come down and they will buy the coffee while it's still green. They'll pay that guy maybe $2 or a dollar now so that he can buy food and feed his family and keep his children from dying. So what are you gonna do? You got your kids starving to death and guys offering you money and you know you can feed your family for the next two, three, maybe four weeks if you stretch it out. But then to me, what the, the worst of the worst is, they don't hire that farmer to pick his own beans. They hire other people and he's gonna sit there and watch it. And by that time, his kids are back in the, in the stages of severe malnutrition. So we're going to be doing assessments because we're getting ready to launch a new feeding program that'll last 12 months. So what we're going to do is bring these families in from different villages. I think there's six villages surrounding this church. We're going to measure the muaks. We're going to record their family information, their village, where they're from. And from that information, we'll make determinations who's going to get into the feeding program and really who's not. Wow. So this device is made for children who are supposed to be five years and under. This little girl here is severely malnourished. You can just feel, you can see her ribs and everything. So we're gonna pull, pull her aside. Let's take her back there. So what we're doing right now is we're just kind of walking amongst these crowds and spot checking. Just doing a visual survey for trying to find the worst children the most severely malnourished. And when we find them, we're gonna pull them aside. Okay, so, what, yeah, this guy's a nine and a half, so Frio, let's take him in the back. It's heartbreaking, honestly. Like you see these kids come up and they don't look that bad. They're like, they're wearing clothes, they look okay. But when you pull that sleeve up and you measure their arm, like you just see how thin they are. I mean, we were measuring, they're literally, like some of those kids' arms are as, as thin as my thumb. My dad probably lived in a situation that looked just like this. So I'm like one generation removed from this. Uh, so wow, so. I'm going to have to stop the video here and now um, getting a little late, but I want you guys to know um, this. I don't know. There's no words to actually describe. And this is a real crucial moment in a different, excuse me, very difficult part to just cut off the video. But this is um, hopefully um, showing you a tiny little bit of the things that are going on outside of the scope of our tiny little reality. You know, you think your life is so bad. You think your life is so difficult. You think, oh, just because uh, um, you're from the hood, you know, your your world has, has you know, decimated um, 